This video is made possible by CodeNotary.io, tamper-proof notarization for all your digital objects. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and my last video, M169, where I talk about the COBOL back at the New Jersey Health Office generated hundreds of comments and a lot of discussion. What I didn't talk about in that video was one more huge advantage of COBOL and many of the other programming languages on the mainframe and that is that you can take a program in source code written in the 60s and compile it today on a modern 64-bit compiler on a modern mainframe and it will compile unchanged. That's one thing. The second thing is you can take an object, a binary, compiled on a mainframe 60 years ago and run it on a modern mainframe and it will run unchanged. And that is a huge advantage and a huge benefit. And that's one more reason why governments, businesses, banks, credit card companies, airlines still rely so much on mainframes. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to log into an ancient mainframe that of course, it's emulated because no hardware from 35 or 40 years old would still run reasonably well. And and then I run it and then I take a COBOL program and I will run it on the right side of the screen on a mainframe that is a modern mainframe and, and move the source code over there and then we run it. So I'm logged in on the left side here. I'm logged into my private mainframe, which is running in the cloud and I have a couple of hundred users on it. And as you can see here, first of all, right off the bat, my MVS operating system, which is the predecessor of the predecessor of the predecessor of the predecessor of the ZOS that's running on this mainframe on the right side, um, that MVS is running as a virtual machine under this uh, virtualization solution called VM370. And one more thing here to say that IBM invented virtualization in the 60s and <laughs> there have been leaders in virtualization ever since. And so it's not like virtualization uh, is a new thing. And so just to show you, I'll um, show you here that I have several virtual machines running and uh, online users as well. So virtualization with VM370 and all its descendants until today is both a time sharing and an online solution as well as a, as a virtualization solution for uh, operating systems underneath it, such as Linux, such as uh, ZOS, and many other operating systems. So TK4 is the MVS instance that I want to log into. So let me log out from here. But before I do that, uh, let me just show you something here. This machine has been up 56 days and 20 hours nonstop, and that's emulated. Of course, that's not a real mainframe. So one more advantage is that mainframe uh, operating systems for sure, but also the hardware are incredibly reliable. The mean time between failure of an of a mainframe is vastly superior to any other hardware you buy in the market today, and the operating systems as well. So it's not unusual to see five, six, seven years uptime for a mainframe. And usually the mainframes from the moment uh, you buy them and install them until you decommission them five, six, seven, ten years later, they are never turned off. They literally never turned off. So this machine has been up for 56 days. Um, and so let's go and log in here. So, so let's type dial TK4. And I'm now in MVS, as you can see here, MVS 3.8, which was released, I think, originally in 1981 or 1982. So we're running here almost 40 year old operating system, which just runs just fine. And it's uh, year 2000 compliant and all that stuff. It is 24 bit, which means it can only address up to 16 megabytes. But back in those days, on I used to work on machines like those and we had two, 3000 online users connected to a machine with 16 megabytes of RAM. So quite capable. So let me log in. I'm user herc01. Password. And now we'll go and select a COBOL program which runs on the system. Okay. I have here a library. It's like basically a directory. And there's a COBOL program written by somebody 
uh, we'll see the name of the person in a second. Oh, here it is. This one. Okay, so we have here a, this is the script to execute the COBOL compiler. And from here on, we have the source code of the COBOL program. And what, it, what this COBOL program does is it uh, finds prime numbers. Okay, so it's, it's a math, classic math problem. And we can do this easily in COBOL as well. So here we have the typical identification division, which tells the name of the resulting uh, assembler uh, object file. And then we have the source computer and the object computer, which in this case are the same. The file input output, so we can tell it that it's going to read how many prime numbers to look for from the sysin. Very similar concept to Unix, sysin, sysout, which here is, we define as 10,000 prime numbers. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Why not? Um, then we have the data division, which defines the data that we want to work on. And here we have, uh, again, we refer to the files, so the file handle. And then here we have the variables, which is called in COBOL the uh, working storage section. So this is the variables that we're going to operate on. And this uh, is then the procedural division, which says what we're going to do with the data that we specified above. So for me, that's very logical. First, the name of the program, then what machine is it intended for? What file handles do you use? If you declare the variables, and then you have the procedure that works with those variables and produces output. So in this case, we have a classic sieve that um, finds prime numbers. This has been documented at length in many, many hundreds of websites. So we're not going to go into that. And then here we just, uh, at this place, we handle the output. We want the output to go, so this is the, the COBOL library, first of all, the library that's needed to execute this program and then and to compile it. And then uh, we have here the outputs, how we want the output formatted. And here is the input to the program. So very simple. Let's run this. I'm user Herc01, and I want this program to be called CO for COBOL. Okay, and I give it eight megabytes of address space. Probably could do with, with less, but, um, and this of course has virtual memory. So every address space sees a full, uh, up to 16 megabytes of uh, virtual memory. So let's save this and we submit it for execution. Submit, oops, submit. And the job has started. We have job number 15. So let me start a session to go look at the execution of jobs. And so as you can see here right now, it's XAQ, it's executing and they tell you which uh, step. So it's still compiling right now and the CPU time. And I think it's already done. Yeah. So uh, we have return code zero for the compilation step and the linkage. And then for the execution, no errors either. Error return code zero. We go here and let's look at what the compiler says. So, okay. Um, first of all, this line is very interesting. This is a compiler from 1972. Okay, so that's a almost 50 year old compiler, 48 year old compiler. And we just compiled a program with, with a binary that's been around for almost 50 years. And then it, it sees the source code here. Okay, it tells us the uh, nesting level, how deep down we are in the logic. And here we have the output. So we should have here also some linkage information, but um, linkage went fine. And so now we have the total length of the of the binary is 9,500 9, bytes with all the with all the libraries we're using. Okay, so it found the first the binary is up to the fourth to this number here. So this old uh, 
binaries. And the formatting here is my problem. That's not really related to the compiler at all. So um, now th what we want to do is take this source code unchanged and run it on a modern multi-million dollar mainframe and see if, you know, if a modern compiler, a 64-bit able compiler from IBM will still take the input from, from a compiler that was designed or released 50 years ago, probably designed a few years earlier. So we take source code intended for a 50-year-old compiler and run it on a modern 2020 enabled compiler. To this extent, I took out the source code and it should be here and made the source code available in my GitHub repository. It should be around here. Yeah, this one. So this is the exact same program. And we can switch here and look that it is the same. Let's look at it in raw format. So as you can see here, this gentleman here, Moore, wrote this program, I don't know, in 2014. And, and we can see here the code is exactly the same. It's only about mm, maybe 150 lines or something. So what I've done is I uploaded this source code to the mainframe and I have it here in source code. So we want to put this again next to it. Uh, let's make it smaller. It is this program, okay. So exactly the same. And I have highlighted here for COBOL source code. Highlight, I can tell it which, uh, which programming language I wanna highlight. So I'll tell it five, and then it looks like this. If I say highlight PL1, it will, it will look of course a little bit weird because it will try to interpret the syntax, but it's COBOL, it's not PL1. So highlight COBOL. I could do um, standard and then it will put in line codes here on the left, which I don't want. I can say on number. Okay. And then we have normal line numbers here for the editor. And these are the line numbers of the source code itself. Now, modern COBOL on the mainframe for many, many years, maybe for the last three years, doesn't need line numbers anymore. but the COBOL compiler will still accept source code written 50 years ago, and that's why it will still compile it. So you can take any source code unchanged from 50 years ago and compile it on today's most modern mainframe compiler, a 64-bit, very capable compilers with lots of features. One of the things about COBOL is it has it over 600 reserved words, and that is the one thing that sometimes turns off people about COBOL. So it has a very, very extensive language. So is PL1 on the, on the mainframe, but uh, it has 600 keywords, reserved keywords, because it can do a lot of things. And people don't understand how modern and advanced COBOL is. So let's see if we can compile this. I have here a little job control language, which is a script to execute the compiler. Let's say that I want to highlight it for JCL, which stands for job control language, just a scripting language on the mainframe. And I give it here the name of the of the source code that we just looked at to compile it. And what I'm doing here, it's very similar to what we had here in this mainframe. Just maybe here it's put in a little nicer. I could I could do it the same way. But um, I want to compile this program. And I want to go, how many did we do here? 3999, let's do the same thing. 3999. It's here. From here, we'll put it in here, okay. And let's switch here to the output of the job so we can compare those. Okay, so we have the output here all the way at the end. And now let's run this job here on the modern mainframe. Let's first save it. I call this COBOL, just COBOL. And let's run it, submit job 2106 and now we say start a new session we go to this output viewer and it already ended but there is a max condition code of eight let's see what that is so something went wrong here is our job output so 
today is May 2nd, 2020. And this is the output from the job. It recognized, so first thing first, this is Enterprise COBOL for ZOS. Okay, so let's see where it is complaining. Um, Enterprise COBOL here. Um, okay, so it's telling us that if we make this, we could make the screen a little bit bigger, but uh, it's telling us that here is a compiler message that 77 should be in area A, was processed as if it was found in area probably A. Yes, it as if it was found in area A. So there's a few variables, but it doesn't like the position. And a COBOL has a format and certain part of the code needs to be, let me put it up here, uh, needs to be in certain areas. The area from eight to 11 is called area A. And then there's an area B and C. So it wants to have certain things in certain areas, just like Python also has certain formatting requirements. So it, it did um, understand though what we meant and it continued compiling and probably also produced output. Let's see here. This is the um, reference. And then this is the linker. Where's the linkage editor? Okay, so this is still the compiler. It's telling us um, where the errors are. So the E means error, W is warning, S is serious, and I is informational. So oh, here is the linkage editor. Now this is being for compiled in 31-bit mode, which means address mode. It can address up to two gigabytes. We could go also up 64-bit mode. And here is the output. So it did still produce the output because it understood what we meant, but let's go fix it so we don't have these errors. And I think what it wants us to do is to move the code because this is a stricter. It wants us to move it to area A. So let's move all this over. And then this will may solve the little error that we saw here. Let's save it and let's go run the job again. So Execute, let's say Cobb 2, so we can keep those apart. And let's run it. Let's go back to the, oh. We can see the compiler at work here. This is our job being executed. If I press enter again, I'm sure it's gonna be, yeah. So, okay, so this time maximum condition code zero. Let's see what, it, what happened with our, so this one is the previous one job 2106 and now we have job 2107 and because there is fewer errors it also produced less output the last one had 811 lines and this one has 764 so let's look at this it found no problems whatsoever and so no messages and it produced the output and um, so there we are so this ran just fine and again what we accomplished here is well, I, I didn't accomplish anything but IBM what IBM accomplished is that they have a modern compiler which is able to take source written 50 years ago or maybe even slightly more than 50 years ago because this compiler is not is the last release of that compiler. There were earlier releases of that one. So if we look at this line, uh, first of May 72, there were prior releases of COBOL, all going all the way back to 62, 63. So, but we took something that this compiler for sure is able to compile, but probably also earlier versions. I have no doubt about that. And move it over here. 
Now what we could also do is take the binary from this system and move it to the modern mainframe and it will still run fine. Okay, so I'm not going to do it here because that will involve me downloading it in binary over to my Windows desktop and then uploading it up again. But uh, I've I've done this many times and I have probably somewhere an instance where I actually moved this compiler, the whole compiler, over to my modern mainframe and ran it and it ran fine. So let me show you. I have here a connection to my mainframe, a different window. We can remove that and um, I have here a volume just to show you a disk where I copied all my very old compilers so as you can see I have here my COBOL library which I copied over from this 40 year old MBS system and I also copied the procedures so if we find the procedure library here it is then we'll also find the COBOL program the compiler invocation COBOL link and go here and we see that it finds the compiler this is the compiler CBL stands for COBOL in CC linklib so let's go look at it CC linklib um, here it is and here is the global compiler itself let's go look at it locate cbl here's the global compiler it's a quite a big directory here but it's here somewhere if you see it shout ifox here that's the assembler that we copied over here it is so this is the compiler and if I want to look at some information you can see it's a binary and um, that's what we're going to use now and compile the same program that we have from the mainframe from the very old mainframe from 40 years ago on a modern mainframe so uh, let's go in here and we take the out uh, exactly the same prime cob so as you can see here that's going to be the exact same program let's uh where is it prime cob okay So you see, it's the same. I haven't didn't even have to change much here in the in the script in the in the JCL, and then we have the exact same program. And if we run this, we should see then in the output that it's the the COBOL compiler from 1972 running on the modern mainframe, unchanged in binary. So let's let's run this. Call this COBOL. Okay. Oh, that's always fine and we give it seven megabyte which is more than enough it's actually less we're giving it less memory here than we give it in here because we're here we're giving it eight megabytes region here we're only giving it seven seven megabytes so just to show you submit it's job 350 and now let's go here and it's already done so this ran fine uh, no issues so you can see here 2nd of May and let's go look for the compiler output and if everything went well we just executed a compiler that was compi that was a, itself built in 1972 so the COBOL compiler is written itself in assembler and so this was assembled in May exactly <laughs> that's exactly 48 years ago first of may 1972 today's the second of may 2020 and as you can see um it has an issue here with the uh 
with the year 2000, back in 72. The, the NVS operating system itself is YK2 compliant, so it knows how to deal with uh, Y, uh, the year 2000, but the COBOL compiler itself, it takes the system data, doesn't know what to do with it, it thinks it's 1920. But that's really the only issue other than that. This, uh, we took a binary program, which in this case happens to be a, a, uh, a, a compiler, and then we run this, and if I'm not mistaken, the linkage editor is probably even older. So we compile this with no issues whatsoever, just like it did here. So we can go look at the output here, uh, just to see that it's comparable. Very, very similar output, because it is the same program. And and here's the output. So it ran the program no problem. And let me see the linkage editor. We don't have output from the linkage editor, but I have <laughs> I have here some output. See if we can find the older one. Um, we chose the linkage editor from from sixty seven. So I was. I have here a linkage editor program that uh, that is from 1967, and it runs just fine. So this is an assembler. Let's see what the linkage. Well, there's no linkage editor for the assembler, but um, so this is all fine. As you can see here, what we've done is two things. We both um, run a took taken a source code in COBOL from 40 years ago, from 50 years ago almost, and um, from 48 years ago and moved it over to a modern day multi-million dollar mainframe and compiled it with a modern compiler and read fine and then we took over a program from 1972 and moved to the in binary to the, to the mainframe to a modern multi-million dollar mainframe and it runs without any issues now I don't know of any computer that uh, can do that. I don't, I don't know any other operating system, any other computing system, which can take a binary written and compiled 50 years ago and run it today, or take any source code from 48 years ago and run it today. I just don't know of any such instance. Linux didn't exist 50 years ago. Windows didn't exist. Any operating system that existed 50 years ago is almost by definition a mainframe operating system. And even within the VMS, uh, digital equipment, VMS operating systems, they changed architecture so often. They were on VAX, then they were on Alpha, then they were on Itanium. Now they're going to go on the x86 uh, architecture. So even there, you, obviously, you cannot take a binary. But even I've tried it to compile old source code on a newer version of a compiler on the digital equipment VMS operating system. It didn't work. So I... I really don't know any other uh, environment that can do that. And again, to the governor of New Jersey, with all due respect, but um, it's actually because of the mainframe that you can actually still operate and can still process all these, unfortunately, millions of uh, jobless claims because the mainframe is able to handle all that and COBOL is handle, able to handle all that. And by the way, also PL1, which is my preferred uh, programming language on the mainframe is just the same and many other languages on the mainframe. And so this shows you one more aspect of why mainframes are so important, especially because the, the governor of New Jersey was complaining. Well, he, one last thing he has to complain about is he doesn't have to rewrite all these programs from written 40 or 30 years ago just because he has a newer machine. I just recently uh, had to compile something that was written for Linux 1.0 2 and it didn't compile cleanly anymore on, on the new version because the compiler was complaining about it and because the libraries had changed and TCP IP had changed which I was compiling against and so even within the light in the span of 15 or 20 years or 22 23 years on Linux I already can't compile old stuff anymore whereas here we're compiling stuff from 50 years ago and so that's one less worry for the governor of New Jersey because he doesn't have to worry about 
uh, rewriting everything or porting everything to a new compiler every time it buys a new machine. So this is the beauty of COBOL. This is the beauty of the mainframe. And if you have any comments about it, if you disagree, please let me know. Be respectful, please. If you agree, then also post comments below this video. I will also post the link to where you can find the source code for this program. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.